Where do we begin with the story? Basically, the main thing you should know is that there is an organization called the UMAW, Union of Musicians and Allied Workers. And allied allied Workers. Okay, so yes. be Allied Workers. So I was thinking, it's not like artists or something, but it's like no. Allied Workers. So it's musicians, but it's also like the stage crew. The stage crew, the, yeah, um, the producers, all the other stuff. Yeah, so it's Te meant to be like encompassing yeah. to everyone who's on In the, the creative side of the music business. Yes. I don't think this would cover like the A&Rs. For example, no, but like, but like it's on the really like, te like guitar techs yeah, or like whatever. And or is like the line between creative and business, but I mm -hmm. think it's still like more business side mm -hmm. of things. But yeah, this is the creative and um, production part of it. So they're aiming to organize music workers and fight for a more just music industry. At least that's what they say on their website. Um, and as there have been a increase in um, union activity in a lot of different realms from journalism and media mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, grocery workers and a lot of other things, especially Pil during the pilot, COVID-19 pilots, pilots, many mm -hmm. other things being like unionized. And that's um, really coming to a head in 2020. I think it's going to be a thing we look back on in history. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, musicians are trying to get together and especially during COVID-19, um, trying to make sure that musicians are covered because there's no live events there's no anything like the bar i was just yeah about before so these people who, who big, like rely yeah. on work and it's not mm -hmm. like a set salary they're they don't have much of a safety net um and until we adjust the way the country works so we get like every other um civilized country on earth and have a safety net for people who are temporarily out of work based on economic conditions they can't control these unions will be a good thing to um help fight for those sort of protections the confusing thing about this is that there is a union that already exists called yes. the afm the um american federation of musicians they've been around since 1896 yes um, basically when they could unionize that ever whatever for styles of music they started it early on. It's yeah. like the auto club. Yeah. <laughs> for musicians. But yeah. yeah. Um like many unions do, they provide resources for their members as well as mm -hmm. um, protecting them. Um and then working not like being necessarily adversarial against employers, but working with employers to make sure that they're treated fairly. The big thing was when radio started dawning in like the, the 30s and 40s, especially in the 40s, AFM had a um, a big help in making sure that they were getting the rightful they were getting rights to their music and stuff that was being aired on uh, um, through radio waves, and then also that there were sessions and everything that everything was good with in between radios and um the artists so there's a lot of protection stuff in the 40s that was big time because you had so many artists and stuff exploding up around yeah. that time and in the 40s and 50s that and that's like, part of the reason why like um a lot of the efforts done by unions like um afm mm -hmm. can contribute to why during fdr's new deal there were specific government programs meant mm -hmm. to fund the arts and musicians mm -hmm. to make sure like they still had a uh, break but they're like obviously in this alphabet soup of organizations that was created during the New Deal, um, you had to have people lobbying in the interest for these groups, including musicians, and this was a big deal for that. Exactly. Of course, later, like AFM is definitely not perfect. They um, were kind of working against people of color. Um, yes, in the 70s. Especially in the 70s, yeah. because um, jazz musicians, obviously jazz was seen as <laughs> criminals music. <laughs> Wait till y'all see Trap. Um, <laughs> Throws gold necklaces on <laughs> girls in bikinis twerking on them. <laughs> it's like 30 years <laughs> later. Like, Eat a dick, old man. <laughs> they, they thought jazz was for hooligans. Yes. But, um, Meanwhile. Yeah, but it, it, during this ridiculous time, it was just an expression of music that was really beautiful and interesting. And the only difference it seemed to have between white music was that um, it was black people who were Dead doing ass. it mostly. And jazz is fantastic. Um, and jazz like bridged a lot of the not a lot of it, but like some of the racial divide with between mm -hmm. black musicians and white musicians because they worked together and made really kick ass music. You'd have like you'd have a white guy on piano, you'd have a black guy on saxophone. This is just like yeah, the integration, yeah, yeah. and it, it was awesome. It would be cool, um, but so but it, AFM's like nah, we can't have that. Yeah, and so AFM is of uh, the reason why UMAW is kind of getting a lot of um, attention maybe. right now from artists such as I had a list around here somewhere but I have um, I mean I have right here yeah, I have like um, Dive Downtown Boys Fugazi Torres Diet Sig Alice Bag Sonic Youth of Montreal Sonic Youth yeah Eve Six a lot yeah. of artists that we've listened to and respect a lot um, 
I first heard of UMAW through Dive uh, because they are some of the most progressive artists I've ever heard of. <laughs> Dive yeah. are crazy. Uh, but they, I saw them um, talk about stuff in December and January about like, hey, there's um, a new union and whatnot out for um, artists to get out and we should start getting out and get more people to support it because they were a big thing for Medicare for All, um, a bunch of stuff on like um, Sanders platform and whatnot just to get um, artists and whatnot the care and stuff that they need because it's really hard for them to get um, health insurance and stuff, um, depending because there's no direct employer for a lot of them, potentially. Yeah. So, especially for newer artists and stuff that are coming up. But the biggest thing that UMAW is they circulated a letter and they said that they demand um, the CARES Act unemployment um, benefits goes to the remainder of the year. So rent cancellation, rent cancellation um, regardless of immigration status, because you have a lot of artists and stuff who immigrated up and they were Neon Indians was one of them when he was younger. Um, Medicare for all, you have like um, a, some type of UBI and whatnot, um, universal basic income. For a more like know, progressive, a progressive platform. Of Democratic Party, yeah. like platform. And one that would be provide the aforementioned social safety net that would um, yeah, exactly. help people so that like while they're in between work as the economy is kind of like evening out, they're not like completely on their asses. Exactly. Especially right now when artists who have a big following, artists who are like more indie, so I mean, they don't have a big following in this future, but they have a, a decent, relatively big following. They keep, they're losing 70, 80% of their revenue right now because yeah. people aren't buying music. People, even we saw the streaming numbers are low. Um, there's no live shows like, are gone and that's where a lot of them generate income. So like- That's where most of the income is generated. Is, exactly. So it's, it's, it's really troubling for everyone. Um, so basically like the, the long and short of this longer kind of thing that we really wanted to talk about was that um, AFM exists and they've done good things in the past, but they've also very much shown that much like you have a battle within the Republican Party, within the Democratic Party of the establishments versus the um, more ideological wing of those respective parties, since they're talking about like um, Medicare for all and um, UBI, I'm just going to use yeah, because like I know terms. AF, I know AF, but basically, yeah. what I'm saying is like AFM is not pushing things as not going as far as um, what a newer group of people um, want from yeah, unions. because so they're not like yeah. they're not using their lobbying efforts to fight for the things and more actively push for the things that the musicians need. No, because uh, AFM has a COVID-19 fund, but it's prob the problem with it is it's hard to figure out where all of the money is necessarily going. They have like three things, um, three sources of funding where it's like the Actors Fund, um, you have Union Plus, which is a mortgage assistance program, um, and then you have the Petrillo Fund, which sounds like the Petrodollar, and that's for disabled musicians. So there's little things that they do do, but the problem is, is the musicians are saying that's not enough for a time like this where they are almost completely out of work, especially for the smaller artists. So um, I love seeing this. Um, Absolutely love to see it. Yeah. From people who are just honest grassroots people that are popping up and saying, hey, we need to general like we need to all come together in this yeah, like, shit we, time we, and like everything. The, the and rules are together. bullshit, but we're playing by the bullshit rules. Exactly. And now we're getting and now they're getting because fucked. like out of n completely out of our control. So because use your power to right. fight for us so that we like can survive out here. Basically. And that's because Nancy Pelosi wants a new set of pearls. Anyways, um, we're gonna go. No, no, she sh can you don't be so sexist. She wants ice cream. <laughs> 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 Okay. Oh, um, Lord. And if you want, if you want even an ounce more of that, check out the political oh, reports that we do. We'll man. probably have one in the next like couple of weeks. Um, any, where any, we are joined by Caesar and Bam from We Made It Podcast. Yes, and, and they are politics and always hot takes. <laughs> Love that it's shit. It's really fun. 